Miss Diamond, you said that uh, you. Miss Diamond, you said that uh, you want there particularly to be smart regulation as opposed to more. Um, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission budget it was 200 million for the year. It's been proposed to cut it. The president's proposed to raise it to 308. Not it seems to be a huge sum. Do you think uh, at the level of 180 million, that's you can get smart regulation out of the CFTC? I have never looked at the CFTC's budgets. I don't know what they need, and so I, it would be almost impossible for me to comment on it. Well, I'm disappointed. Um, by the way, the uh, Appropriations Committee just voted 27 to 19 not to give them the additional funds. Uh, I, I, I am surprised because it did seem to me you are well informed about other aspects of what the federal government does or doesn't do, and to talk about smart regulation, but to, in effect, give them a pass on a substantial reduction in the CFTC seems to me to be a mistake. Uh, but that's your answer. Next question is um, the legislation that would remove any application. I understand there's a Volcker rule debate, but as you know, over and above the Volcker rule, there are requirements we have put on derivative trading, which you've spoken of somewhat favorably. But there is legislation that would have exempted the transactions in question and any other transactions conducted overseas, uh, not in this country, from the rules about clearing where possible, about transparency. Do you believe that uh, we should enact that and exempt the kinds of activities we're talking about here, uh, even when conducted by an American institution, from these regulations? So the, 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 these trades are not exempt from regulations? No, I'm talking about the regulation, Ms. Dunn. You know what I mean. No. I'm talking about the specific rules enacted in the financial reform bill that are about to be adopted regarding derivatives, transparency, et cetera. There's a bill, as you know, that would exempt derivative trades overseas. And it's over and above the Volcker rule, whether in a bank or not. But there are two sets of rules here. Do you believe, uh, are you supportive of that bill that would exempt these trades from the uh, rules on derivatives that we hope to have in, in, in place? Yes. You, why do you think that they are adequately regulated elsewhere? Why would you not want the American regulators to have uh, an ability to, for instance, uh, transparency uh, and uh, clearing where possible. I, I thought you were approving of those. Why would we want to exempt these kinds of activities from those rules? So the, these, rule, the, these trades are visible and regulated by OCC and the Fed. 60% of these trades were in fact cleared. All of them were fully collateralized. So not against rules that, that cause those things. Well, if they were fully well, cleared, Mr. Diamond, excuse me, but then they, th then they, would, have met, they would have met the rule. Uh, but it does seem to me there were some problems with this in terms of your knowing about when they happened, about your being uninformed about them or underinformed. Um, but you are in favor of exempting these kinds of trades from any American derivative regulation. Not, not any. Prudential they should have, transparency they should uh, have. The regulation of derivatives. Well, no, the transparency is part of the thing you would be exempted from. There's no legal requirement for transparency other than that. Well, once again, I'm, I'm disappointed. Let me ask you, because uh, we have a time issue, you said that you are, because you have a fortress balance sheet, these are not a threat. But what about institutions whose balance sheets are less uh, impregnable? As I said, a couple of chain link, maybe a picket fence or two. Um, uh, what, what should we have rules since we don't legislate just for J.P. Morgan Chase? Is there a danger that this kind of activity in a financial institution, an insured institution, with less of a strong balance sheet might cause some problems? I, I don't know, but I think you should all take comfort in the fact that all American banks are better capitalized. The system is far stronger today. Well, I, I appreciate that, Mr. Denver. That wasn't the question I asked. The question is, and we can't assume that's going to be that way forever. And there are some who are resisting the capitalization. So if you were not as well capitalized, would this have had some, some, some problems in it that we didn't have because of your uh, balance sheet? I mean, you said you have a fortress balance sheet. That assumes there's something special about your, you, the way you are that made us have to worry less, but we can't assume that's going to be the case for every financial institution. But I also said it would be solidly profitable this quarter, so relative to earnings. That's not the question, Ms. Diamond. Please don't fill about that. Well, let me ask you now. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I asked a specific question. Mr. Diamond well knows what we're talking about. Let me ask you. You did say finally that there would be some uh, callbacks for uh, compensation. You've also taken some responsibility here. Will the callbacks for compensation, uh, is your compensation on the table for consideration of callbacks? Yeah, so all of the, this whole act is being reviewed by the board. 
yours specifically, Mr. Uh, specific my, question. My, my compensation is 100% up to my board. Is it and if, under uh, the, uh, Mr. Diamond, you said there are going to be clawbacks for people responsible. Is your compensation in the pot that's going to be considered for that? They will do what they see is appropriate. I can't tell my board what to do. Thank you, Mr. Biggert, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Mr.